For my money, the library in Halo Combat Evolved may well be the most infamous level in the entirety of Bungie's magnificent franchise. Repetitive, overly long and frustrating is how I'd describe much of it, but equally there are plenty of people out there who have something of a soft spot for the mission's corridor shooter stylings and flood-based mayhem. I myself made a video some two years ago debating whether it's Halo's worst level, and in this video I decided to take another look at it from beginning to end. Before we get cracking proper, let's first quickly remind ourselves of events leading into the library. As fearsome alien adversary the Covenant attacks the Pillar of Autumn, the ship's captain Jacob Keyes tasks Super Soldier Master Chief with protecting an AI named Cortana, and together the pair escape to the nearby Installation 04. After rescuing the captain from the Covenant's clutches, Keyes sends the pair to find the Ringworld's control room to stop humanity's sworn enemy from using it as a weapon, while he leads a squad in search of a weapons cache. Chief and Cortana fight their way across an island to a map room, which leads them to Halo's control room and a chilling discovery. The weapons cache Keys is looking for isn't a weapons cache at all. By the time Master Chief arrives in the area, it's already too late to stop him. The captain and his squad had already fallen foul of the parasitic nightmare known as the Flood. Surviving their relentless onslaught, Chief links up with the installation's monitor 343 Guilty Spark, and together the pair head to Halo's library to secure the activation index needed to prevent the flood's spread. The library begins with a glimpse of the activation index, your end goal, and the briefest of explanations as to what you're meant to be doing. We must collect the index before we can activate the installation. From start to finish, this level is all about the Flood. While you will have seen much of what they have to offer during previous mission 343 Guilty Spark, I like that Bungie does immediately throw in a curveball as several carrier forms, a Flood variant you've yet to encounter, immediately arrive on the scene and begin waddling their way towards you. There's little time to breathe in the surroundings, no build-up before you're thrown into the thick of things, left alone to square off against these new abominations. As soon as you see them and hear the track Devil's Monster, Monsters, the Flood's theme of sorts begin playing, you'll likely realise that you're in for a tough time. These opening moments make Bungie's modus operandi for the mission abundantly clear. 343 Guilty Spark may have been your new enemy's introduction, but it's here they will be given the opportunity to truly take centre stage. It's a shame then that the stage in question is one which ends up becoming quite stale quite quickly. The library is a featureless maze which seems never ending, and because of that it soon loses its impact. When I think about standout level design in Halo Combat Evolved, I think of much of the silent cartographer, the first half of Truth and Reconciliation, and the lead up to the Flood's reveal in 343 Guilty Spark. Each example expands on the familiar Halo format by adding a memorable twist, such as giving you the opportunity to choose how you navigate an island, scaling up long-range combat across increasingly complex arenas, or subverting expectations through a shift in tone and the use of environmental storytelling. At first glance, the library threatens to be similarly unique. Its cold, nondescript hallways do an excellent job of demonstrating the incredible scale of the Forerunner facilities which sprawl across Installation 04, and for a short while, you might begin to feel a palpable sense of anticipation as you start to wonder how Bungie will build on this initial promise. It isn't the first time you'll have encountered an alien structure in Halo Combat Evolved, but it is by far the most alien out of any of them, and early on, that is exciting. Except, as you continue to progress, you'll find no further development, with aesthetic and structural variety both sorely lacking. And even if you're someone who places little value on either, some of the issues accompanying them will probably still manage to grate. One of the biggest is that quite often the library manages to achieve the amazing feat of being both very linear and very confusing at the same time. Its surroundings are consistently visually similar, which can make it difficult to figure out exactly where you are. The grey hallways provide few discernible landmarks for you to orientate yourself around, although Guilty Spark's guidance does sometimes help alleviate that problem, and the lack of distinction between its areas means it's harder than it really should be to ascertain which direction you should actually be heading in. Also, to call the majority of the areas you battle the flood in combat arenas would be very generous to say the least. 
Most encounters take place in simple hallways or the odd smaller area you're forced to defend while waiting for a door to open. And aside from the occasional set of pillars hiding weapons or health packs, or the ridges offering the smallest pieces of verticality, most combat takes place at ground level and involves an awful lot of circle strafing. Keeping the overarching level design the same, but tweaking a few of the micro details within different areas, adding more cover or verticality for example, I think would go a long way towards making the level more enjoyable. As you make your way through the seemingly endless facility, Guilty Spark will often chime in with an observation or two. His dialogue is the best part of the library. There's a massive amount to take in, and what he says builds out the wider world of Halo in just the right amount, whether that's giving insight into the nature of the Flood. The installation was specifically built to study and contain the Flood. Their survival as a race was dependent upon it. I am grateful to see that some of them survived to reproduce. Or dropping hints that the Forerunners may well have been humans themselves. <laughs> Hustling. You brought such ineffective weapons to combat the Flood, despite the containment protocols. In the present, we know that the Forerunners certainly aren't the same species as us, but I remain convinced that Bungie's original plan was that they would be. There are just far too many hints that suggest so littered throughout Halo's campaign for me to believe otherwise. On the topic of aliens, one of the defining features of Halo Combat Evolved is the Covenant AI, which in 2001 felt like a huge step up from most console shooters, which usually included enemies who would tend to charge straight at you or stand still and fire in your direction. The Covenant communicates, they have a hierarchy on the battlefield, and they often genuinely seem to be trying to outthink you. The Flood are nothing like the Covenant. They are an enemy much more in the mould of those in a Doom or a Quake, a one-dimensional threat with few tactics. And that isn't necessarily a bad thing. In fact, at certain points in Halo, they are a refreshing change from the Covenant, and I've always argued that the Flood are a brilliant enemy when utilised in levels containing a mix of different factions. Think the chaotic outdoor skirmishes in Two Betrayals, or the absolute carnage you witnessed during the Warthog run at the end of the moor. Even here on their own, for a short while they do entertain. The run and gun gameplay is different enough that it helps freshen things up, and I personally always get quite zoned in early on. The comparison to Doom and Quake, I think, is an apt one. Like those games, however, the library is not a varied enough environment in terms of both aesthetic and layout, and combined with the Flood, what you end up with is a clash between two elements which soon begin to both feel very repetitive. The library would have definitely been more bearable if you fought the Covenant, as encounters would require more thought. And likewise, the huge number of Flood would have been less boring to take on if the environments those battles took place in were more engaging. Unfortunately, what you get in the library is the unholy trifecta of repetitive level design, repetitive enemies, and repetitive encounters. The library always looks the same, the Flood are always going to rush towards you, and they always appear in similar circumstances, jumping from vents or shambling around corners and heading straight towards you. It ends up being rather tedious. Once you've experienced one encounter, you've really seen them all, barring a few during which you receive backup from groups of Sentinels, and that means in pure gameplay terms, it's a level which begins to wear thin very quickly. Also, with regards to repetition, who doesn't love being told to wait somewhere over and over again? The security doors have sealed automatically. I will go access the override to open them. Please wait here. I will deactivate the security lock. Wait here. Despite the mostly negative things I've had to say so far, I must at this point make a concession. I do think the level's core concept is an interesting one. The library is without doubt a very alien place, and the Flood are a very alien adversary, and during the mission's early stages in particular, you might find that unfamiliar mix to be quite oppressive. Previous levels featured a mix of Forerunner facilities and outdoor areas, and a decent amount of backup, and even 343 Guilty Spark had a squad or two of Marines hanging around to make you feel more at home. But there's no humanity within the confines of the library, and the Flood, an enemy which can at best be described as inhuman, do much to further the feeling of you being a small fish in a very large, but also very frightening pond. Much like the environment itself feels unlike anything you've encountered before, the Flood feel unlike any 
anything you've fought before. You are no longer battling the Covenant, an enemy which somewhat mirrors humans in the way they use tactics and communicate, in settings that you'd grown accustomed to. Instead, you're taking on a foe that shares little in common with humans in an environment unlike anything you've traversed up to this point in the game. It takes you completely out of your comfort zone and makes you feel trapped. The flood appear in such vast numbers throughout that they serve to make the library's huge hallways feel more enclosed than they actually are. Why they're called the flood is clearly illustrated. They enter an area in great waves and consume everything in their path. You quickly begin to understand how relentless a force they actually are. You also take them on across a fairly long level, one that feels especially lengthy because of the distinct lack of changes in pace or environment which would otherwise break proceedings up into more digestible sections. The Silent Cartographer, for example, is essentially a level made up of three segments. The beach landing through to reaching the locked security door, finding the security console and returning to the unlocked door, and finally locating the map room before escaping. The library, on the other hand, feels like one long, unbroken stretch, which in fairness does perfectly mirror the enemies you encounter. Both are indistinct, everything blends together, and it never feels like the pressure lets up. Is it too long? Well, the answer to that question is a resounding yes. It far outstays its welcome, and in my view, it probably would have worked better as a shorter segment at the end of 343 Guilty Spark. But thematically, it does still work. If the level design serves to make the library feel alien, and its flood-filled hallways help highlight your new enemy's overwhelming nature, then the library's length ensures you are mentally exhausted by the time the mission concludes. It gives you true insight into what a prolonged fight with the flood would have actually been like for Master Chief. To put it simply, by the time you finish the library, I suspect you're perhaps meant to feel worn out. Speaking of conclusions, I do also think the best encounter in the game is included right before the mission ends. An enormous set of doors open, and you're confronted by the largest group of Flood you've encountered. It's a wonderfully frantic final firefight, which serves as a reminder that even though you've taken them down in great numbers, they are not to be trifled with. And shooting your way through this final pack of horrors, Master Chief reaches the activation index, which signals the library's close. You may now retrieve the index. Protocol requires that I take possession of the index for transport. Your organic form renders you vulnerable to infection. The index must not fall into the hands of the flood before we reach the control room and activate the installation. It's not often I get to say this, but the Anniversary Edition's take on the library does add one genuine improvement, the arrows on the floor. The vast majority of its runtime consists of moving through hallways, and while you might think that would make it difficult to get confused, because the flood tend to spawn in all directions, you may well find yourself not only moving around a lot to avoid large groups, but also constantly changing the direction you're facing, which means when encounters end, there's a chance you might not be 100% sure where to head next but the arrows completely eliminate the risk of that happening. Other than that, many of the same issues most other levels suffer from remain, such as overused effects and poorly redesigned enemies. But the worst issue is one I recently also highlighted during my video on Two Betrayals, the switch from dark to light. In the original Combat Evolve, the library is a foreboding place full of monsters lurking in the shadows. In the Anniversary Edition, it's bright and breezy, and I thoroughly dislike the change. The crux of this video is centred around the following question. How much do you value thematic intent compared to variety in terms of both gameplay and level design? If the lack of variety is no issue, you enjoy the overall tone and atmosphere, and you're happy as Larry running and gunning for half an hour or so, then you might end up actually rather enjoying the library. If, quite rightfully so, after Halo's superb first half, you were expecting something more, a continuation of the absurdly high quality on display during the the previous six levels, you'll likely come away wondering what on earth happened. Either way, for good or bad reasons, I think it's fair to say that the library certainly leaves a strong impression. Thanks for watching the video, boys, girls and Spartans. If you had a floodtastic time, do consider liking, subscribing and letting me know your thoughts, and hopefully I'll see you all again soon.